So this is black cohosh, uh, Sifuga racemosa is the scientific name. And this one's kind of lying sideways. I don't know if you can see how it's supposed to grow. There's a couple out here in the woods that are growing taller. I don't know if you can see how they're supposed to stand up in a nice little white spike. This one's so loaded down with flowers that it's that's come down. But uh, but again, it starts blooming. It should be standing up like so. But uh, it starts blooming from the bottom of the central little panicle and then blooms all the way up. You can see all the buds still in place here. It's got these compound leaves and typically there are three of them in each patch. As you can see here, one, two, and three. They separate then. Um, they separate from the middle and branch out. That's one of the things so that even when it's not in flower, it's easy to tell um, the cohoshes from other types of plants. And then again, it produces uh, these large, large flowers. This is one of the largest of our woodland wildflowers, and this one is just starting to bloom. You can understand that when it is in bloom, it actually is a pretty showy flower. Let me find one that's more typical. I can see another one right here, so I'm just going to go to. And there's a couple right here that's starting to bloom, and here's one, a couple that are all by themselves. Let me just come to this one. So you can see it's just starting to bloom. They're very pretty little flowers. Um, and because it's such a big showy flower when there's little else in bloom, it really really stands out in the uh, in the woods uh, This is June and again a few things are blooming in the woods in summer, but black cohosh is one of them Black cohosh has been used medicinally especially and still a very popular thing for things like uh, treating menopause and whatnot um, I don't know if you guys can see this but again this uh, in in its flowers itself it's got some beautiful, um, some beautiful flower heads on here that'll grow. But again, it's, it's been over collected in some places. In fact, there are studies going on right now. If this thing can sustain the huge amounts of, uh, of collection that people do because of its popularity as a medicine, um, cohosh, black cohosh, for, um, you know, for treating menopause and many other illnesses. And this is something that's been, you know, that's, that's been taking place by different uh, Native American cultures for, for, you know, for centuries as well. Um, here we have a couple of smaller ones. But again, black cohosh um, is an important woodland plant. It's one of the tallest uh, woodland plants that we have. Um, that, that are, that, 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 uh, and again, it stands out, especially because it blooms in the summertime and a few other things do. Oh, and we have a guest here. Look at that. Here's a, lu a lucage. Um, this is a orchard weaver spider weaving its way up through there. They're beautiful little spiders. This one probably Lucage vena, venusta. But anyway, it's a, a beautiful little garden spider, sometimes called the uh, orchard weaver garden spider. But anyways, beautiful, beautiful plant here. Um, you can look for them now um, with basically a big, huge candelabra-like big flower stalk spike that sends out in the middle or edges of the woods. And so it's quite easy and stands out this time of year. But that unfortunately has led to its over collection and it's used as a, as a drug for treating all sorts of things. But again, in particular, very popular and, a, and as experimental drug for, for treating um, all sorts of things having to do with uh, menopause. Black cohosh, a native medicinal plant.